All right, this is uh, chapter six, sample test. And number one, the sample test says, draw a frequency distribution that is bimodal and symmetric, and give an example of a population that might ha have this type of frequency. So, bimodal means there's two places that are that are real common, high frequency, and if it's symmetric, it's going to be, the mean would have to be in the middle of these two humps, and so it's something like that. So it looks the same on the left as the right, and the mean would be right in the middle, and so would the mode if it's symmetric, I mean um, the median, and would have two modes. The most common would be in this area and in this area, so it's bimodal. Now, an example of something that might be like that might be um, if you had, uh, let's say, men and women uh, age 20 that were doing uh, just how much could they, weight could they uh, press? let's say bench press and so there would probably be a, 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 high, a high spot for the men and, uh, and a, a common place for the women and somewhere in between it would should dip off a little bit and that would possibly be something that could be bimodal and, and, um, and look something like this okay that's number one. Number two. Number two says, give an example of a situation that might have a high variation. Um, one that we talked about in the class was uh, rolling a die. Then the likelihood of getting a one or a two or a three or a four or a five or a six going to be pretty equal and so there's going to be a lot of variation it's not going to be low on variation which would be a very narrow peak it's pretty even all the way across so this would be a high variation okay um, so that's number two number three which of the three measures of central tendency would be appropriate for the average salary of a large firm with the salaries that are skewed right and have outliers? Skewed right, and so it usually gets greater this way, and if it's got a tail to the right, then, and has outliers here, this is a, a classic example of say a, a business where you have the executives getting paid way more than most of the employees. Most of the employees are down here and the executives get something. Now, if you were an executive or somebody that was saying, I want to impress people by how much we pay our employees, you might use the mean because the mean is pulled uh, strongly by outliers or stronger than the median and the mean might be over here someplace whereas the median would be closer to where there's half below and half above. So if you were trying to convince people that, that this was a company that paid well, you would want to use the mean. Now, if you are trying to convince people that the company doesn't pay very well, you would want, uh, you would say, I want to talk just about these guys, you know, forgetting the outliers, which what is what the median does. And so then you would use the median. So when the question asks, uh, um, which of these would you use? Um, you would, you and why, and I said in here, 
think about the points, the different points of view. And so depends on the point of view that you're trying to get across, which one you might use. So that's answer number three. Now let's go to number four. Number four says, um, find the mean, mode, and median for these 12 blood alcohol. So if I were to do this manually to find the mean, I would have to add them up. If I was going to find the median, I would want to sort them in order. So I'm going to sort them in order. Uh, so I have a um, 0.27, uh, a 0.17, that's lower, so I'll put it down here, 0.17, then I got a 0.16, then I got a 0.13, 0.17, a 0.24, a 0.29, a 0.24, a 0.14, a 0.16, a 0.12, and a 0.16. So we kind of have something that looks like it's mounted down here. It looks low in here, so it's kind of bimodal. That's got a, a bump in here and then a bump down here. But anyway, to get the mean, we can add these up. See, this would be 0.3 and this is 0 0.25. 0 0.3, 0 0.25, 0 0.25, takes care of those. 17 and 17 is uh, 0 0.34, 16 and 16 is 0.32, uh, 0 0.48, these two is 0.56. That's what those are, so we got 14, 18, 25, 5, 10, 15, 22. 2.25 and so if I divide that by see so you had 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 12 divide that by 12 I will get the mean so turn on my calculator 2.25 divided by 12 is comes up with a mean of e, uh, Point one eight seven five. Now, what's the median? Well, that would be the middle value, and if I've got 12, I'd be halfway between 6 and 7. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and 7. So the median would be halfway between 0.16 and 0.17, so it'd be 0.165. And the mode, the most common one, is 0.16. Mode, median, mean, and, and let's see. Okay, and so that's what they wanted us to do for number four. Now, I think we use this, these numbers again, so I will keep these nearby. Number five. Oh, let's, I'm going to check and see if I've got those right. And, and in case you've forgotten how to do this on the calculator, I'm going to push stat, edit, and I'm going to put those numbers in a list. I may have done that already. Let's see, have I? I don't see them. So I'm going to go to list one and clear it, come down, and type them in there. 0 0.12, 0 0.13. 0 0.14, 0 0.16, 0 0.16, 0 0.16, and then 0 0.17, 0 0.17, 0 0.24, 0 0.24, 0 0.27, 0 0.29. And then I can go stat, calculate, 
one variable statistics on list one and it gives me a mean of 0.1875 which is what we calculated and it says they add up to 2.25 which is what I got it says there's 12 numbers which is what I got and it says the median is 0.165 which is what we had and the mode isn't shown on the calc so that all checked out number five find the range of the blood alcohol values well the range would be the largest minus the smallest so that's 0.29 minus 0.12 which is 0.17 now find the range use the rule of thumb involving the range to estimate the standard deviation explain or show your calculation so the book says divide it by 4 0.167 divided by 4 is hmm, 0.0425 I believe let's see uh, what was it? 0.17 divided by 4. 0 0.0425. The other rule of thumb that I showed you was to take, if it's less than 16, was to use 0.17 divided by the square root of how many numbers we had, and we had 12. And that rule of thumb gives us 0.17 divided by the square root of 12 is 0 0.049. So you could do both if you want. So we got both of them give you about 0 0.04 as an estimation for the standard deviation. Okay, so that's number five, and we show.